Welcome to this edition of Racing News. In the show this week, we focus on apprentices, exercise riders and trainers. Whilst the apparent lack of depth in our race riding ranks is concern for some involved in our sport, there are those young apprentices and jockeys who will nevertheless succeed and rise to the top. And Gold Circle scoops a national gaming award. That's coming up later in the show. But first, KZN trainer Dennis Dreyer shows that he still has what it takes for him, his team and his horses to be in the limelight. Veteran trainer and KZN champion for the past season, Dennis Dreyer, recently recorded his 2000th winner of his career. The illustrious milestone was reached when the three-year-old gelding Hardcore won the first race at Gravel on Sunday the 26th of August. And Hardcore is not for the catching. Hardcore will win it. Second place is close. Dennis's career started in the late 1960s when an assistant trainer to his late great uncle, Sid Laird. He won the Durban July with Spanish Galliard in 1992, but his most successful time has come in the latter years of his career. Since 2010, he has won 17 Grade 1 titles, no less than six of the last nine being gold medallions. Two great fillies in his care in recent years were sprinter Val de Ra, who won 11 out of 13, including three grade one races, and Beach Beauty, a diminutive miler to middle distance champion who clocked up five grade ones. Dennis, what makes for a successful trainer over time? Not easy, you know. I think you ought to have the lucky breaks. There's no doubt about that. A lot of hard work, dedication, love of the horse. But I think the main, main object is to have a background of top owners and horses that are going to make you proud. What makes for a good horse? Well, obviously pedigree, yes. confirmation, and then in my mind, guts, heart, heart and guts. You know, as they say, not too many uh, trainers will committed suicide when they've got uh, some <laughs> fantastic young horses in the pipeline. Yeah. So, yeah, no, they, um, they change your life. Good horses change your life. Is that what gets you up in the morning? Yeah, besides that, you know, the love of the game and, uh, and the horse. And I think the people you work with. You know, it, it, it's a big plus if you've got a team around you that are so enthusiastic hard-working and uh, I think that's how we reap the rewards. What advice would you have for say young trainers coming into the game today? Well as I said you know I think the first thing is hard work, dedication and keep in touch with your owners you know they they're the backbone of any stable, your hard yard, everything and um, you must chat to them even if the horse is not even running or at a stage not quite ready, don't wait for the owner to phone you. You phone the owner and just say, well, your horse is doing well. You know, as my uncle always said, it's, it's easy if you've got the horses to be a top trainer, but you also got to be a diplomat. That's true, he doesn't have to work. What is the pleasure you've derived from training horses? Well, you know, it's been in my blood all my life. Uh, my dad was a jockey, my uncle, Sid was a trainer. I was born and bred virtually in the manger. And uh, yeah, thank God I choose this um, route to go in my life. Do you prefer training sprinters or stayers? Listen, I, I've done well with sprinters, but um, having said that, uh, you know, I've, I've won a Gold Cup, I've won a July. So yeah, but. Sprinters seem to come my way more than the stamina horses. Do you prefer racing on turf or the poly track? Ah, uh, Michelle, to me it's no difference. Uh, I suppose I would prefer the grass, but uh, my success rate on both surfaces, I can't complain. Do you prefer training fillies or colts? <laughs> either. <laughs> Love it. Either. <laughs> Anyone 
horses that can run. That's what I want to train. <laughs> Are you superstitious on race day? No, funny enough, no, not, not at all. Do you prefer reading a race card or a novel? I'm not a great novel reader, but uh, I do enjoy the odd book. Um, race card, yeah, I like browsing through the race card. Do you prefer sitting at home watching TV or going out to a movie? No, I'm not a movie boy. Never been a movie boy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you prefer home cooking or going out to dinner? Well, I've got such a good wife that cooks so well. Um, we don't, mind you, we do entertain quite a lot. We do. Um, yeah, either or, quite happy. Well, sounds like life is really good, Dennis, and here's wishing you many more years of championship titles. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. It's, it's been a great ride, and uh, hopefully we can continue for another couple of years. So whilst the newly crowned champion trainer of KZN, Dennis Dreyer, enjoyed the illustrious milestone of 2,000 winners, the win was made even more special for the stable when won by a precocious young apprentice, Luke Ferraris. Whilst the apparent lack of depth in our race riding ranks has been cause for concern to some involved in our sport, there are those young apprentices and jockeys who will nevertheless rise to the top and succeed. Second year apprentice Luke Ferraris joined the South African Jockey Academy in January 2017. By December of the same year, Luke had made his race course debut and four months later, in April 2018, he won his first race. Is further back, but Vivier is in the lead. Rail trip nearest us is having a go with Crimson Royale. Vivier is just the leader. Vivier did it for Luke Ferraris. In the five months since then, Luke has gone on to notch up 37 wins to be a two and a half kg claimer. Luke has burst onto the scene in the short time he's been race riding and clearly has the game in his blood. Both his grandfather and father have been champion trainers in South Africa, with David winning the title in all of 1995, 96, 97 and 2000. David relocated to Hong Kong in 2003, where he's been most associated with six-time Grade 1 winner Vengeance of Rain. Vengeance of Rain went on to become the highest prize money winner in Hong Kong history a record that lasted until 2010, when broken by his old rival, Viva. Luke, what was it like living in Hong Kong? It's, I enjoy it, um, the city, I enjoy the city life. It's the racing, um, how it works with the city in between, you know, happy valleys, in between tall buildings. It's, it's a vibrant city um, and yeah, I enjoy it there. I left Hong Kong when I was 10, um, went to boarding school in Grahamstown and yeah, and then when the grade nine came, yeah. You've spoken a lot about your family. How important have your grandfather, father and your mom been in your career so far? Oh, extremely instrumental. Um, my grandfather has always been there supporting me. Um, his rides that he gives me, they, they, I really enjoy riding from him. He helped me when I make a mistake and yeah, help helped me learn from it and going forward he's always supportive, my dad's always behind me, my mom, they always watch every race and yeah they give important criticism after the ride. In your opinion what are those important characteristics or traits that you think you as an apprentice need to become a good jockey? Um, obviously balance is, a, is instrumental, um, the, the way you judge pace, the uh, fractions you set um, yeah, it all just adds up, trainers pick it up quickly, how, how you balance a horse out and um, the pace you go, they, they pick it up quickly and to me if you can learn that quicker, it's, it's a big bonus. How do you learn that, through experience? Um, yeah, I'd say a lot of it, it is growing up with horses, it, I've picked yeah. up on it, um, watching some of the greats ride, um, the top jockeys in Hong Kong, South Africa, just picking up on them um, and obviously putting into practice when riding in races, it has, it's helped a lot. Who are some of those jockeys you aspire to? Oh, it's, there's, there's, a, there's a lot really. Um, 
all the top jockeys here is Pierre Stradham, Brandon Arena, Anton Marcus, Anthony Del Pesh. Um, it, they've, they're the main ones that I look up to, picking up the small details that they do that most of the jocks don't. And internationally? Um, obviously, there's, <laughs> there's a lot. Um, Douglas White, I've always looked up to him. Yes. Um, Joe Moreira. Yes. They, yeah, they, they're really good jockeys. Yeah. Luke, I see you running between trainer strings at Summerfelt. You work hard. Yeah, um, it's that's the best way to gain experience. I think um, working hard, you know, the harder you work, the more lucky you get. So it's just working hard in the, at this stage and mm -hmm. trying to gain as much support as I can. Yeah. Um, and obviously that gets done in the mornings. Yeah. And fortunately enough, I've had the support from many trainers in KZ and in Joburg. Yeah. How many horses are you riding a morning? Uh, I'd say any, anything between 20 to 30. Do you find that takes quite a lot of energy and obviously your diet is very important to maintain those energy levels? It is. Um, at the end of the day when you cross the finish line first, it, it's, all, it's all worth it really. <laughs> um, but yeah, obviously diet plays a main role in it, keeping the weight down yeah. while having enough energy yeah. to, to last the morning. Um, but yeah, it's been good. Is it addictive that feeling of winning? It is. Um, you love winning. The next morning you'll be you'll be up and you'll do it again, and then the next meeting will come and you hope for the best. You've achieved a lot in the space of a year already. Uh, what are your goals for the rest of the year, Luke? Just try ride as many winners as possible. Just get as much experience as I can and learn. And that sounds like a good goal to me. But it's not only Luke who's flying the flag in the junior ranks either. The fourth year apprentice Kanye Sakai, who turns 20 in October, hails from the Eastern Cape. He was recruited by the South African Jockey Academy whilst at high school in Cape Town. Whilst a 4kg claimer, Kanye rode 13 winners last season. In the six weeks since the start of the new season, he's recorded 14 wins including a trifecta on the 12th of August at Scottsville and a fantastic quintet at the Apprentice Jockey Focus race meeting on the Gravel Polytrack last Sunday. He is said to be one of the hardest working youngsters according to trainers who say he's always on the move and looking for work in the mornings. Kanya, congratulations on Sunday. That was a wonderful day for you. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. And yes, and it was a very fantastic day for me. And it was very important. Like every joke would love to have a winners like that. I I'm really grateful for it. Not every joke got those four winners in the day. It's only it's only happened to the good jokes and top jokes like you know Anton Marcus and Anton Talpesh. Yeah. So that makes me feel like <laughs> I'm good enough, yeah. you know, to crack those winners. I improved a lot from my riding. That shows me I'm, I'm good enough and I can do it more often. Yeah. How did it make you feel? It makes me feel very good. Now, can you tell me what has led to your success so far? I can say hard working is a very important thing. The other thing is running around the track and make sure you ride many horses as you can and for many trainers as possible in the morning. And listening to the instructions of the trainer and giving them the the good feedback and and how to feel the horse and, and be judgment, good judgmental of the paces yeah. and the cleaners love that. So I think by doing that, that's what helps me a lot. And listening to the seniors' advice and the cleaners give me advice and asking questions, it helps me a lot. And the riding masters for giving me this experience and their courage helps me a lot too. Do you have any jockeys that you aspire to being like? <laughs> yes, <man. laughs> you know Warren Kennedy, and because in my first time at track, he was the one who was helping a lot, and I was working with him together for Mr. Fanzel, yeah. and he helped me to work together. Like the thing I couldn't know to work together doubles because doubles yeah. work another horse, and he taught me all those stuff and to be judgmental of the paces, and to how to squeeze the horses, make you give more kick on yeah. in the race and it is in my first career in the race and explains a lot about the race and how this racing industry work and I must be always be confident and not to bring myself down all sort of this encouragement yeah. Warren Kennedy 
gives me that hope and I'm really grateful to meet him in this career. Now tell me what goals do you have for the rest of 2018? <laughs> Firstly, I'd like to finish my claim two and a half. I'm not too far as yet. And hopefully to win the KZN Championship Apprentice and the South African Championship Apprentice. And you know, it's like now to see the end of the year, senior apprentices are qualifying yeah. and so they're going to leave their career. So that gives me opportunity to, to get that championship. The South African Jockey Academy can be very proud of these two young apprentices. And in the next few racing news shows, we'll be profiling other apprentices, both here in KZN and countrywide. Professional exercise riders are commonplace in racing yards abroad. They're an essential cog in the wheel, link in the chain. But unlike race riders, exercise riders focus their energies at the training tracks, helping in the preparation of horses for race day. Two dedicated lady work riders at Summerfelt are Carrie Ann Radford and Rachel Venneker. Carrie Ann has been riding work for the past 18 years. Work that's seen her travel abroad and fill a post as exercise rider for William Haggis in Newmarket. She's currently the exercise rider for Dennis Dreyer and Alistair Gordon. How many horses do you ride a day? Anything from 20 to 25, depends, you know, now that the young horses are coming in. You've got to be fit and, you know, these horses are not always easy and you can be riding here the whole morning. So, yeah, you, it's important to be, to be fit. How important is your feedback to the trainers once you've ridden these horses and worked them in the mornings? It's important, you know, you're working with the horses every day and you know them better than anybody. So you can tell the trainer that the horse is its normal fit and happy self and if it's moving well and at, at its best. Yes. What is it about this kind of work that you enjoy so much? Oh, we, we're lucky to do what we love and work with the horses every day and to be involved with a horse that it, when it comes out and wins um, and if you're lucky enough to win a big race with a horse it's an indescribable feeling and uh, yeah it's, it's what we get up for every morning and what we all love as horses so we're very fortunate. The first um, good horse I worked with was probably Texan Summer yeah. way back when. Um, since then you know horses what a question Disco Queen, Tandawami of recent times, uh, Monk's Hood, who was quite a special horse to Alistair yeah. Gordon. And then for Mr. Dreyer, um, Barbosa, Punta Arenas, Sand and Sea, Lady in Black. Yeah, I've been fortunate to sit on some, some really good horses. Would you say you're a little bit of an adrenaline junkie? Yeah, a, a little <laughs> bit. Um, but Wasn't you the sprinter? Yeah, I, I enjoy the faster things in life, I think. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> The racing news team first met Rachel Venneker at the opening of champion season this year. Fantastic night, eh? I ride the lead horse, we've had a good evening, great vibe here at Gravel, great weather, really good day. Whilst Rachel looks a picture aboard Francilla on race day, she's not just a pretty face. Rachel is a grade 11 pupil at Roseway Waldorf, combining her studies with being an exercise rider. A lifestyle not unlike Lyle Hewitson, who completed his matric at Kersney College whilst working horses before class in the mornings. Rachel, how did you get involved in exercise riding? Well, I've show jumped my whole life and I basically just began with Craig Udy and I came and I trotted some horses and from there it developed into just starting to work ride. Which are some of the horses that you've sat on over the few years you've been working? Um, I got the chance to ride the group winner Guinness before from Dryer's Yard. Um, and Mr. Wright, I ride Flitchty Buffar and Sunny Bill de Toy. How many horses do you work a morning? Generally about 10 before I go to school, but on a weekend or a day when there's no school in my holidays, it gets up to about 20, 25. So what time are you up in the morning to be here? So I wake up at half past three and go through to the yard at four o'clock and then we at track at half past four. How are you able to manage exercise riding and all your studies? Lots of sugar <laughs> and endless energy. 
You wouldn't have it any other way, would you? No, of course not. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Rachel, how fit and strong do you have to be to do this work? I'd say both mental and physical strength is uh, quite uh, important. You're, I struggled in the beginning to hold horses. My arm strength wasn't so great, but that's improved. Leg strength, obviously being in the jockey position can be a bit um, difficult on that. But mental strength as well, dealing with these horses and long day at school and when you're up early, sort of focusing on them can be a bit difficult, but you've got to kick yourself into gear. And what is it about this kind of work that you enjoy so much? Probably the speed, the need for speed is quite good. <laughs> and everything, it's, the whole sport is just fantastic. Craig, what is it that you look for in an exercise rider? We've got Rachel, who's probably one of the best uh, who's ever worked for me. You know, carries you now rides all over. They're both very well balanced, good hands on a horse, and uh, they're dedicated. Their feedback that you get after they've worked a horse, is that important to you? Very much so, especially if they're riding the same horse uh, often. You know, they can tell the difference day to day with a horse, and that really, really helps a lot. Always a need for girls like this? Yes, especially they see they've got softer hands. They've almost got a bit more patience yeah. and, uh, as I said, dedication. I mean, Rachel gets up three days a week at, uh, at half past three to come and ride for me. And then from here goes to school and then the afternoon rides all her um, show jumpers. So it takes a lot of dedication. We've had quite a few girls try, uh, but most of them fall, fall by the side uh, within a couple of months. Whilst race day jockeys ride at some time during each week, it's people like Carrie Ann and Rachel, the apprentices and other work riders who do the majority of the riding. The 2018 Vodacom Durban July was voted the best horse racing event in South Africa at the recent Gaming and Gambling Industry Awards held at Carnival City recently. Gold Circle's Ken Twiddell and Raf Sheikh received the award on behalf of the KZN-based racing operator. Raf, congratulations, you must be delighted with this award. Yes, we are, inshallah. Uh, the Vodacom Durban July is an extraordinary event showcasing the best horse racing in South Africa and we are extremely proud of this event. The Vodacom Durban July has become the race day for the people in South Africa. Over the past 120 years, it's not only grown into the biggest party on the South African continent, but like all race days of international acclaim, it's synonymous with high class and glorious fashion. With the excitement of the day, who can resist a wager? The event has become the biggest horse racing betting bonanza on the continent. It's a sport, but also an industry, having given rise to many other secondary industries as well. Thank you to the gambling industry for recognizing our event through this award and also a shout out to Vodacom for their continued partnership in helping make this event possible. brings this week's show to a close. Keep your feedback and suggestions coming. We hope we are going some way to bring you both the news and information you've been asking for. Be sure to catch our replays on www.goldcircle.co.za and follow us on our Facebook page at Racing News TV Show. That's a wrap. We'll see you all again in a fortnight on Sunday the 30th of September. Until then. The Racing News Show and previous screenings are available online at www.goldcircle.co.za. Click on the YouTube icon, go to playlists and click on Racing News to access all shows to date.